Hello, neighbor. My name is Robert J. Ray. I'm a professional counselor and therapist and trainer of trainers. I worked in a mental health prison for 11 years. I have fixed a lot of broken men and women in my 45 years as a counselor and therapist. I was born in Maria, Mississippi and graduated from the famous T.J. Harris High School in 1963. T.J. Harris played Brinkley and Jim Hill in football and basketball every year before that stumbling block of integration dissembled the black race. I ran for mayor of Meridian in 2021. I ran for governor of Mississippi in 2019. I'm Robert J. Ray, the man with all of the answers every Monday at 4 p.m. Watch me on WeBelieve.Global. Hello, neighbor. Welcome to the Robert J. Ray Show, the man with all of the answers. Hey, I'm, I'm anxious about our phone. We won't be able to have you call in, but you will be able to make comments and put your two cents in that way. Hey, this is going to be a Molly Whopper show here. This is talking about love. Everybody knows about love, but don't anybody know what it is. After this show today, you're going to be able to tell people and know what love really is and, and where it comes from. You've heard people say he loves her and she loves him and he loved that and uh, she loved this. And everybody can speak about love, but really, don't nobody really know what love is and where it comes from. But I'm anxious to share with you that, hey, love is everything. Everything everybody wants to do, everything everybody does has love wrapped up in it. Now, you want to know where did love come from? Well, it comes from the blood, the heat in your blood. I know you've heard individuals say, oh, he was uh, hot, red hot blooded. Uh, his blood got hot. And that's usually when you get jealous and want to fight somebody for your honor of your lady. His blood is hot. He's ready to fight for his uh, lady's fair. Now, why is that? Why is the blood warm uh, because of the love? Because that's what love is. It's a warm thing. You've seen some men, they are so rough and mean and gruff. But if you see them around their wife and around the woman they love, they're just like a teddy bear. Hey, yeah, baby, baby. And uh, you wonder, what was the change? Well, the change is, is that the lady and her love have calmed them down and made them a little teddy bear. Yeah. So this is what happens when you fall in love and when you uh, experience love. A lot of people just lollygag and dilly-dag with love, and they don't know what they're doing. But after this show, you will know what love is, and you'll know where it comes from, and you'll know why we have that love. Now, when people speak of love, they really don't know what the issue is when they're speaking of love. But have you ever, I think you remember when they tried to put a, uh, well, they did put a mechanical heart in an individual. And this was back in 1982. This guy named Bernie Clark. They put a mechanical heart in him. Now, the doctors, they knew how to do this. I mean, they had the four valves pumping the blood, and they would pump it down into the uh, lungs, and the lungs would pump it back. And uh, it would go through the ventricles and go through the arteries and all of this. And you learn this in science. That's the way it's done. And doctors, they thought that if they could duplicate that, that that would be all that's needed. <laughs> <laughs> but what they found out is that when they put this, this mechanical heart in Bernie Clark back in 1982, he, he lived for 57 days. It was called the Jarvik 7. Y'all probably might have heard of it. Now, when he, they put this heart in him, it kept, him, it kept his uh, blood going through his veins and going through his arteries. But for some reason, he was cold all of the time. He had to have blankets around him all the time. And the uh, doctors, they didn't know why. They didn't, why is he cold? I mean, the, the room is a, is a pleasant temperature. Why is he cold? But the reason that he was cold is because although the, the pumps could pump the blood, it couldn't give the blood the heat that it needed. So these geniuses who created this, this uh, heart to put in a man, <clears throat> they couldn't put what the infinite man put in there. And all of these doctors was wondering, what was the reason that he was so cold? 
And not only did his, he become cold physically, he became cold mentally. His wife, they talked to him, and, and she said, well, as she went to visit him, he, he, he started to treat her strange and started to treat her mean and started to treat her cold. And this is the reason that, <laughs> that he was treating her cold is because he, he, his, his heart wasn't pumping any heat. It wasn't any heat. And you have to have heat in your heart in order to love somebody. Yeah. If you've seen people that have, uh, say, lost their mate, I, and I've seen a lot of them, while their while they wife is over there with them, they're just as warm and friendly. But then after they uh, abuse their wife and they, they kill that love that the wife has for them over the years by drinking or abusing her and things like this, and then the last bucket of water they pour on that, far as far of love, that's it. The wife is gone now. She She's not going to love you anymore. If you was the only man in the world, she wouldn't love you now because you, you've killed all that. And while they were together, the man was neighborly. You would go out there and on the porch and you would say, hey, how you doing, neighbor? Beautiful day today. I mean, yeah, it is a nice day today. Long as he had his heat and the warmth of love to, that his wife had was giving him, but after he lost that, <clears throat> and then you come out on the porch and his wife and his kids is gone and everything, and and uh, you say, well, how you doing, neighbor? Go to hell. See, that's what he's saying now because he's become cold. The things that made him warm, the things that made him be neighborly is the love that the wife he had for the wife and his kids and his family and all of these things. But now that's gone. So so what they didn't understand is that there are all of these doctors, you get all the doctors in the world and all of their uh, knowledge and wisdom and, and, and combine it all and, and compare that with the infinite man's knowledge about the human body and what's in it. It would be like a thimble full of water compared to Lake Superior. That, that, that's, that's how far ahead of the uh, doctors that the infinite man is. So we have these doctors trying to create these uh, hearts, and they did, and there's a lot of them on the market now that they put in, in men. They even tried to say, well, maybe we need some organic stuff in there with the heart. And they did. They got this mechanical heart, and they put a pig's valve in some of them. Now, neighbor, listen. The human body is a unique thing that was created by God. You cannot put any animal parts in a human body. And, and they tried it, and it didn't work. It would work for a while, but every other organ, if you put a, a pig's valve in a person's heart, Every other organ in that human body is going to be rejecting that, that valve. It, oh, we all know we can't have this. That's why every time they put a mechanical heart in an individual, they have to put all of these uh, uh, shots in them so that they won't reject the heart because that's what's happened. The uh, rest of the body be rejecting whatever they put in there. And they've tried to put, they put they let, now they try to put a cow's uh, valve in there. And it doesn't work either because it's rejected. And they have to put all these drugs in the individuals to try to get the heart to accept the uh, cow's uh, organ. But they, it's not going to do it. So this is why these things won't work. This is why these artificial hearts won't work because the love that was in that in that man's in the person's heart, all of that's gone. All of the love that he had for this person, that person, that thing, is gone now. And an artificial heart doesn't have that. And even if they transplant, and this is what they do, they transplant another human heart, a person get killed or he dies, and they gather the heart in, and then they go and transplant it in another person's body he's still not going to be the same, even though the heart is there, because that heart loved the things that it loved. 
It might not be coordinating with your mind of the things that you love. And uh, you, they, they, the people don't really say anything because they really don't know what's happening. Long as the heart is beating for them and keeping them alive, they're okay with it. But they don't understand that there's things happening inside the body that are keeping them from loving what they used to love and what they, what they willingly love. So this is what happens when the doctors, these, these uh, genius doctors, try to put organs in a human body and it's not going to accept it, especially the heart. That's where the love is. Now, you would think that a, a man, when a man loves a woman and the, and, the, and the woman loves a man, and then you wonder how, how do they fall in love? And they do, and they do fall in love. But after a while, they may start to, to back and off of each other. And you wonder why. Well, the reason for this is that when they fell in love, they didn't really fall in love with the other person. Uh, say they fell in love, they still love themselves. It's the woman loves her beauty. And the man, he loves his understanding. So if the man is trying to love this woman and she's loving her beauty and the way that she looks, then he can't really get in there to love her because she's loving her own beauty. And a lot of females out there, they do love their own beauty and they use that beauty in order to get what they, they want in the world. And then they use it to make their husband do what they want them to do. And, and it's the same way with the male. The man in the marriage, uh, in the love affair, he loves his own understanding, and he thinks that he's got all the intelligence, and the female should listen to what he says and do what he says to do, and uh, she can't love his understanding. This is the whole thing about a marriage. The woman is made to love the man's understanding and his intelligence and he leads the family the way they need to go. The man, he is created to love the woman's beauty. Oh, I love that beauty. But then once they get married, then that beauty, it renews itself all of the time. A lot of men, once they uh, get married and once they taste the, the first fruits of the woman's beauty, then they kind of get waned off about it, especially if he loves his own understanding. Then he ends up not loving his one wife, but he ends up loving just women, period. And that's why so much cheating goes on in the marriage is because they are not loving the other person, but they're loving themselves and then trying to use that to love the other person. And this is, and this is what happened in a lot of relationships out there. So if you're in a relationship and, and uh, the man is not, and, and the woman is not letting the man lead and, and be the understanding and the rationale in, uh, in leading the family the, the way it needs to go, then there's going to be conflict in there. And if, the, and if the man is not loving the woman's beauty and loving her alone, see, this is the key. You've got to love your your woman's beauty alone. That's it. No other, no other woman enter into that. And then you will have a harmonious. Act. And it's the same way with the, with the, uh, with the uh, female in the marriage. She's supposed to love her husband's understanding. And, and he's supposed to get away from loving his own understanding. And uh, then they will be in a harmonious relationship. But if this is not taking place, if he's not loving it, if he's loving his own understanding, she's loving him. And, and, and females, you don't love a man because of the way he looks. I mean, <laughs> I've had friends, <laughs> and, they, and they was really, they had real nice hair and everything, and they would, uh, and we would be out in a, in a uh, shopping center, and I, we'd be walking along there, and the girls and females would just be just Google all over my friend Mark because he was he was looking he had nice hair had brown eyes and and just just a nice handsome looking man and uh, they would uh, just be oh look at him he's so fine he's so fine and uh, 
And then when I when I became rational, it used to it used to bother me when they would you know they would ignore me. And then I would say, well, well, how about me? Well, you know what I look like? And they would just come straight out and say, well, you ugly. <laughs> you know, you pitiful. You ugly. And uh, so it would hurt you my feelings. But in the end, you would see that hey, once he go through all of these uh, females, I mean, and and that's what he would do. These these handsome guys, they go through more females and have more sex than than you can even imagine. And this is what happens. But this is not real love. This is just love of the sex and love of yourself. This is all this is. Hey, I'll be right back, and we're going to start in on the infamous. The black American race is the only race in the USA who do not have connate rational minds to pass down to their offspring, which means the black baby boys being born today will not have their precious gem to compete with all the other races for their piece of the American dream. Why is it that other races can enter the USA with little or nothing and in a few years have more than the black race? The reason, no rational mind. You have to have a rational mind to operate a business and make it pay. The Black and White Race Rationale by Robert J. Ray. Available on Amazon. Get your copy today. All right, neighbor, I was telling you about my friend Mark, a uh, handsome, handsome guy, and the women just be falling all over him. But they was they would be pushed away from me. But as we as we got to know them and as he started going through them sexually, they would be calling me up, where is Mark at? And I would say, well, he's upstairs with your friend Susan. He's upstairs with your friend Susan. I said, yeah, he's up there, you know, doing the same thing he, he was doing with you last night. And they thought that I, I was wrong for doing that. But, hey, I, I, like I told my, my friend Mark, I, I don't lie about love. I'm not going to lie for you so you could go be with this individual. And it wasn't done out of jealousy. It was just the fact that, hey, you need to know these things. And then after they found out that he was two-timing them, then they would come down there and want to be in my room. This is when I was managed over this rooming house. We had about seven or eight different people in there, and Mark was one of them. And he would just have them up running through <laughs> all day. And they would be in there. And I would say, well, why are you guys so crazy about it? Oh, he's he's he's, he's good looking. I say, well, you can't. I, every, well, all of y'all can't have a good looking man. And uh, and they come to find out. And then the next thing you know, they were down there trying to offer me their sex. But, you know, I wouldn't take it because I would never go behind it. All of my best friends in time, you would never find one to say I went behind their back to try to have sex with their uh, girlfriend or their wife. And, and, and they've offered it to me a lot of times. But I'm not that way. I got morals. And uh, I don't do that. And I still got my best friends in time. They love me whenever I see them. They embrace me, welcome me in to their homes. But these females, they'll dump you. They'll, <laughs> they'll spit venom on your name. But I still got my best friends in town. But this is how love goes. They love the wrong things. And a lot of girls, they love men because they're handsome. But women, don't choose your man because he looks good. Choose him because he's got intelligence and he know and on his job and he knows how to uh, treat uh, the female and knows how to love her and and, and going to be a make an excellent father and a and a breadwinner. So this is what you need to need to think about. Uh, if you got comments, you can you can put them in, and then if I see them up there, then I'll try to answer them. Now, we're going to get into the real meat part of this uh, uh, infamous love lecture. I'm going to use what I used to use at the prison when I would uh, be do this session with the prisoners in there. I would ask them, what do they love more than anything in the world? And I would give them time. I'd say, think about it now. I would give them time to think about it. What do you love more than anything in the world? And so by the time they, they someone would be raising their hand right away, they, they knew right away. And the things that they would love, I'd say, well, what do you love? And 
they would say, I love gold. That because they have all of it, they you remember when all the gold people and they still wear people still wear gold, but there was big time things back in the eighties and the nineties and stuff. People have I remember Mr. T, he had so much gold around his neck, you could buy a house with it, uh, a car with it. And uh if you say it, somebody might take he said, I pity the fool to try to take this gold. I pity the fool. And uh they what they like that gold. And a lot of them would say, Yeah, I like that gold too. And a lot of them would say they that they like uh, jewelry, and uh, then some would say they like uh, sports. And and it's hard to find an American male who don't like sports. I mean, they they like football, baseball, basketball, and that's what I loved when I was coming up because I loved my team was the New York Yankees, the Minnesota Vikings, and uh, the uh, Los Angeles Lakers out there, and. Uh, but I, but after I became rational, I got to thinking. I say, you spent a lot of time on that, you know, a lot of mills things on that. And then when they lose, you get depressed. And uh, and I say, that, I'm gonna have to leave that alone. And that's what I did. Which you know, I'm not into any sports now. You know, even my Yankees. I was into them ever since I was in, uh, grew up in New Jersey back when I was a little kid. My, my stepfather, he was a Brooklyn Dodgers fan, and I was a New York Yankees fan. And uh, but I had to get rid of that because I was using too much time and energy. You, I had to watch it, then you had to try to bet on it, and then you had to talk to people about it and argue about this and that. And then when you would think they were gonna win, they would lose. That would hurt. And then and I see people all the time, boy, they get angry and. And they be dejected, <laughs> they be depressed. <laughs> and I say, now, why would you want to get depressed with these men? They making millions of dollars playing a game. They don't, whether they win or lose, they still going to make their millions. And uh, I say, well, why, why am I getting depressed and getting all up in that? Fuss? So I don't even care about sports now. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even watch it now. And uh, so this is what they were saying that they love. And then... A lot of them said that they loved uh, music. Now, I love my music. Now, I love my old school music. Now, back in the uh, uh, Motown era and all of that, Stax record and, and uh, Atlantic and all of these uh, singers back then, I loved them. I still love them today, the Temptations and all of these. I listen to that music more than anything when I'm in my car and stuff like this. And it just uh, soothes you a little. But now, they, they, a lot of them like that rap music. And I would ask them, i say, now the rap music y'all listen to, i say they be talking about, you know, be calling the women names and uh, be all up under their dress and uh, all up under that and then uh, calling them different stuff and then be talking about killing their fellow brothers and stuff like that. And uh, they say, that, that's, that's our music. That's, right. that's what we do. i say, well, do the music force you to go out and drive by, shoot somebody, want to shoot somebody. And uh, and I guess it did because after that, then here, Tupac, he got shot. Then Biggie, he got shot. And a, and a several more of the rappers got shot. And uh, and I got to thinking, I said, well, you know, when we were listening to Motown, we would, they would be talking about going out getting chicks and and uh, girls and stuff, and we would be trying to imitate that. But it's just so sad and scary how they these rap songs stimulate these young guys to go out and do these kind of things. But that's love. That's how love works. They get heated up for that music in the heart, and they go out and try to live these things. And then I asked them, and then a lot of them said they like uh, the drugs, the sex, and things like this, the marijuana, and uh, yeah, so they did. Now, these things here are particular loves. These are the lowest loves of all of the loves in the world that you can love. And, and it's okay to love these, but to love these more than anything in the world, and that's what I asked them, you know, what do you love more? Than, and that's what most of them said they love more than anything in the world. And I gave him a chance. I said, does anybody want to change theirs and, you know, before I move on? And I say, because this, uh, these uh, particular loves here is in your natural mind. 
And your natural mind is the lowest degree of your mind. They, they, don't even, they, don't, they don't even know anything about the degrees and levels of the mind. They think you just got one big mind. <laughs> and that's what they use. So I asked them, I say, does anybody want to change? And uh, I don't think anybody changed. If they did, maybe one or two changed. Now, the natural mind causes you to want to do love the natural things in life. And the natural mind has to do with the silver laws. Each one of these minds has something to do with the law. All of these things were created, and you have to have a law in order to uh, use these laws. Now, the natural mind is geared to the silver laws. That is obeying the, your speed limit out there, no stealing, no killing anybody, no raping anybody, no robbing anybody. And uh, this is what they, this is what the natural mind is trained to do. So these individuals, if that's all that you working on is your natural mind, Naturally, you a lot of you are going to end up in prison, and that's what they did. Because in order to get these things that they love, these things cost money. That's why all these things cost money. And if you don't have money to buy these things, if you wasn't born rich, or if you wasn't born into a, a rich clan, or if you don't have a job that can get you these things, then what do you? The next thing you do. You start committing crimes, did you? You start selling drugs. You start selling marijuana in order to buy gold. You start selling drugs and crack in order to buy gold and jewelry and cars and these things and your music and your food. You go out and eat the best food and have a smorgasbord. You go out, you got plenty of cash money because you're doing this, but you're really setting yourself up to lose the most precious thing in the world, and that's your freedom. And this is what they did. All of these inmates that was in there that I was doing this uh, said infamous love lecture to, this is where their mind was. It was down there. So then the next, I started in on the specific loves. What's that? What specific love? They was asking. I said, well, don't worry about it now. I said, because we already got what you love, but I'm going to name some of the specific love off that you didn't, you didn't name. And I say, what about your, what about your, your mother and your father? Now they want to back up. Oh, oh, I love my mama. I love my father. I said, okay, but you didn't say that. I mean, you put them kind of on the back burner. How about your children? I love my kids. I love my son. I love my daughter. Yeah, but you, you didn't say that. You love other things more than you do this. Do them, though, don't you? Yeah. Your wife, your, your woman. Oh, I love my, my woman. She knew I love her. She knew I love her. I said, yeah, but you didn't say that. I mean, do you think she would have been hurt if she would have known that you love these uh, material things more than you did her, <laughs> your kids, <laughs> your mother, wouldn't you, wouldn't you think that they would be kind of hurt by that? And they just kind of sit there, and, and now they get to thinking in their mind that, hey, maybe they should have said some of these things. How about loving truth? You know, that's a specific love. Good is a specific love. And uh, how about the, uh, the church? I, how about these things? But they didn't say these things. They don't love these things because the reason that they don't love these things is because they didn't say they love. It's not in their heart to love these things. And integrity, and uh, they didn't love these things. And uh, when, when, when they looked at themselves, then they was kind of embarrassed about it because here they are. They loving all of these material things. They've given the best part of their life. They've given up their freedom to love these material things when they didn't name their mothers, their sisters, and their brothers, their children, their female that they, that they say they love. And uh, they didn't name these specific loves because in order to love these things, you have to have a rational mind. 
and they didn't have rational minds because if they would have had rational minds, they wouldn't have been in there in the first place. So the rational mind have the rational laws that it has to deal with. And this is has to do with your morals. See, the, all of these minds have different types of loves and different types of behavior patterns that they have to go through. The rational mind, they love good and truth and integrity. And they didn't even know what integrity was. I said, does anyone know what integrity is? None of them knew what integrity is. If you're going through life and you don't have any integrity, then you, they, people look for you to do anything. But I, I explained to them, integrity means that you will do the right thing and the uh, good and true thing even when there's no one around. You can be out in the middle of the desert and you see, and it's a stop sign out there. Nobody's around, nobody's looking. And you'll stop for that stop sign, just like at night. You driving your car and you see a red light and nobody's around any place. And, and the light might be a long light because I've done it myself. But if you got integrity, you stop and you wait on that light. You wait for that light to change. And it's like anything else. If you have somebody else's money and they don't even know you have it, integrity means that, hey, you're going to see to them getting that money. And that's what integrity is, is doing the right thing and the good and true thing, even when there's no one around. We'll be right back. Y'all niggas was born into a faith-only religion. Baptist, Methodist, Holiness, or Catholic. But y'all have one thing in common, believing that faith only will save you. Y'all were taught to believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and y'all bought into it without questioning whether it was genuinely true or not. Just because your parents introduced you into it, but don't blame them so much as the false preachers who preached this false Nicene Council 325 AD doctrine. The Niggas Holy Bible by Robert J. Ray, Available on Amazon. Get your copy today. Okay, now. I told you about the uh, two loves already, the, spe the, uh, the uh, natural love and the specific loves. Now, it's another high degree uh, in your mind, and that's called the uh, universal loves. Now, what would the universal love be? The universal loves is what everybody in the world, and you could say everybody in the universe loves. What would one of those universal loves be? Well... The one that would come to mind is God. Don't you love God? Don't everybody love God? They say they love God. Sure they do. And you can go anywhere in the world. You can go over in the Amazon jungle, and if you communicate with the little pygmies or these people in there, they would tell you that, yeah, they love God too, and they'll tell you who their God is, and they'll tell you what God wants them to do. And because this is a universal thing. These loves are universal. Anywhere you go in the world, they're going to have a God. Even the Taliban. They, and the way they chop people's heads off and where they kill people and beat females down and treat females, they still say they love their God. <laughs> and, and they treat it like... So the issue is, is that every race anywhere in the world that there's a human being, they they got a God and they and they say they love that God. So that's a universal love that you would think. What else is another universal love? Well, heaven. Everybody that love God, they want to be in heaven one day. And anywhere in the world you go, whatever country you go in, people are talking about after they die, they do want to go to heaven. 
They don't. They might have different gods and stuff, but they have an idea of what heaven is. And by the way, that is why we was created. That is why the infinite man created the universe is so that there could be a heaven from the human race. You don't. You might not understand that now, but just think about it. Heaven, people love heaven. That's a universal love. Do you think these inmates knew anything about that? They've, they've heard about heaven. Sure they've heard about heaven. They Because their mamas and their grandmamas, they be going to church and want to be in heaven one day. Or either somebody died, they would tell them that, oh, they've gone to heaven now. They would tell the kids. And so everybody is aware that there is a heaven. People believe that there is a heaven and that they're going to be there one of these days. And uh, most anywhere in the world, they would tell you, say, hey, when I die, I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to that place, that other place down there. And that's a universal love. But most of these inmates, I asked them, I said, well, what, what about y'all? Do you, you want to be in, do you want to be in heaven? Uh, some of them say, I, I don't, ain't no heaven. Yeah. It ain't no hell either. Ain't no heaven there. So they had gotten that philosophy that there's no heaven. If it ain't no heaven, there ain't no hell. So they didn't believe in it. But some of them believed, and they w believed in heaven, and they wanted to go to heaven sometime. And I would ask them, I'd say, well, <clears throat> well, do you think there's any conflict with you committing crimes and uh, uh, robbing people and uh, raping individuals? Uh, do you think there's uh, anyone in heaven that does that type of, exhibit that type of behavior? Oh, oh, and they will say, it don't matter about that, Mr. Ray. You know, all you got to do is have faith and, and, and believe in uh, uh, that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And they got these inmates thinking that, that they can do all of these criminal activities, <laughs> rape and murder and rob people and, uh, and degrade people by selling them drugs and make them jumping through hoops and doing anything, degrading things. Yeah. And that they'll, when they die, if they got this same faith that they mamas them got, that they'll go on into heaven. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I look at it and I say, that's absurd. That's what you mean. I, I say, why would you believe that? I say, it's people here in the world. It's polite company here in the world that have people in it. They would let, if they was having a party, a wedding or something like that, they wouldn't let you in. It's, I say it's even human beings would let you in. And you thinking angels in heaven going to let you in? <laughs> and, and they would, and they would kind of squint like they didn't know what I was talking about, which they didn't because they didn't know what they were talking about. So that's a universal love of heaven. And the church... That is a universal love. You can't go anywhere in the world and not find people that have a church. It doesn't matter where you are. You go to Afghanistan, you go to Iraq, you go in England, Japan, uh, Egypt. Anywhere you go, people are going to be going to church. They, they got a church that they're going to go to. They're going to have one day out of the week for a Sabbath day. And they're going to be going to church. And uh, you ask these guys in prison, say, well, you know, how often did you go to church? And nobody would say anything. <laughs> because they wouldn't, they wouldn't even be thinking about going to church on a Sunday or Saturday whenever. Because they would be too busy getting their love. These are particular loves in order. And that's what they would do. And they would get these loves in order. And they would be indulging in these loves on church day, and they wouldn't care anything about going to church. And uh, but this is a universal love that everybody needs to be indulging in. Everybody needs to have a church to know in because all of these love that you love in here in the world, those are soon going to be gone. They're going to be disappeared. They're going to be gone. Then where you have. If you uh, on the earthly level and you don't have any idea about what's going to happen to you after death and after you die, 
then you just you just in the world. Then you're a worldly person. You're an earthly person. And when yo when when you die, and you ain't, you don't have any church inside you, or any heaven inside you, then your earthly mind dies. Then when your earthly mind dies and you wake up over in the spiritual world, that no more earthly. Well, so what are you going to be thinking? You're going to be trying to be earthly in a spiritual world, and you're still not going to understand what's going on. What, what about the neighbor? Do you love the neighbor? And you're supposed to. I mean, it, it's not any religion and any people who, have, who believe in a God that don't believe in loving the neighbor. And then even in the Christian religion, the, the two biggest commandments, supposedly, is to love God and love the neighbor as yourself. Do you see that happening anywhere? These are universal love now. This is supposed to be going on all over the world. Do you think the Taliban over there and, and the Al-Qaeda uh, Al and all of them, you think they care anything about the neighbor? But they're supposed to because any religion is going to have those two commandments. And they don't practice this. People don't practice it. People don't really care about the neighbor. <laughs> And you can see that by the way they're being treated, by the way they victimize each other all the time. That's a universal love. And I mentioned a couple of, what about the Ten Commandments, people? Do you love those? That, they were created by the infinite man for you to live by. But how many times in a day or a week did you hear anybody mention the Ten Commandments? And this is... And this is a universal love. Anywhere you go in the world, and probably in the universe, if you could get up on Mars or Mercury, where people are, they would know about the Ten Commandments. But people, you can't hardly. When I was out there at the, uh, and where the little sex offender was, I was working out there as a, as a mental health tech, and they would have all of these. Uh, uh, bad behavior kids, they would come and have a one big session sometime and uh, so they could be together. And they would they give prizes for answering questions. Uh, and if you answer the question, you could go up front to one of the mental health counselors and get a prize and get a, you know, a big candy bar, or maybe $5. And, uh, they, would, and the, uh, they would tell some of the uh, mental health tech to ask them a question and uh, would they put up anything for them to have a prize with. And uh and I would always put up something. And I and they would say, Mr. Mr. Ray, what do you put up? I I if I bring any money in, I I say I put up five dollars if an individual in here can answer this question. And one time I put the five dollars up and I say if that if there's anybody in here could uh, recite and tell me the, the Ten Commandments in less than 30 seconds, I give them this $5. One would get up there, and couldn't any one of them do that? A whole, and these were teenagers and, and uh, females and males. And could not a one get up and name the Ten Commandments? <laughs> now listen, neighbor, if your kid don't, can't, repeat and don't know about the Ten Commandments, then what do you think he's going to be doing out there? He ain't going to be thinking about stealing. That ain't it. If I can steal it and get it. And a lot of them, they will steal each other's stuff in there <laughs> because they, they hadn't been taught this stuff. And they would kill somebody too. They would fight. They would try, try to kill each other. They would fight. And we had to stop these fights. And here I am, I'm 70 some years old, out there stopping these little maniacs trying to kill each other. And you could get hurt real bad, too, like that. I think I hurt my rotary cuff one time trying to stop a fight in there. And, uh, but not a one of them could name the Ten Commandments. And I imagine some of you people have a hard time naming them. So it's five commandments that you have to have in relations to God himself. These five 
is your contract with God, and these five over here is your contract with the neighbor. So learn those. You know, these over here is like don't have any God before me, don't have any graven images, uh, do, do, not, do, not profane, uh, do not profane the name of God, uh, honor your mother and your father, and, and, and things like that. And then these over here, that should not kill, that should not steal, that should not commit a dirt, that should not bear false witness against the neighbor. You should really teach that. Now, my grandmother, when I was living out in the country, you know, I used to have questions about the Christian church and the way people behaved in there. And she would tell me and say, look, learn the Ten Commandments and obey those when you go out in the world and you'll be okay. And that's what took care of me out in the world. When I left home, I was up in New Jersey living on my own at 17. After I finished high school, I, I went up there. And I was up there. And I would get all type of opportunities to do uh, criminal stuff. And anytime somebody would offer me something to do something, I would use those commandments to see if that, they would say, hey, hey, hey I'm a, we gonna tell, hey, this guy, we're going to tell a lie, and I want you to, to witness this lie with me. And I would say, that, I think that's more like bearing false witness or something like that. And I, I would never do it. I, I, I'm not going to help you lie on another individual. Uh, what is that? And anything that came up, when people wanted other people to cover other people's stuff, oh, man, I sure would like to have that car there. Would you, Ray? I said, no. I said, I would like to have a nice car, but not that particular car, not his car. And you have to know these things. If you don't know these commandments, this universal love, then you're going to be breaking them. You're going to be committing these things. And you're not going to even know it. Kids, they, you can't blame them if their parents didn't teach them these things, didn't teach them about these commandments. Then you can't blame them because the parents was created here for them to use. And this mind is your spiritual mind. This, you're supposed to talk about spiritual things. And this here is where your spiritual mind is located, is in the high degree. And if you can't understand those things, then it's going to be hard for you to even think about making heaven. Be right back. Senator James Oliver Eastland, he headed up the U.S. Judiciary Department for many years, the highest judiciary committee of the United States of America. He was my guidance, my superior, protector, and mentor. He did show me how the slick communist Jews was coming into Mississippi and corrupting our blacks who were only a few generations past being ignorant slaves. Slaves whom had been long supported with home, food, and upkeep until a war released them from so-called slavery into poverty, homelessness, and without assistance. We grew up together. Killer Killing by Larry Ellis. Available on Amazon. Get your copy today. Welcome back, neighbor. Hey, now we've been talking about the loves. You got those. Now I'm going to say something about the relationships. <laughs> now this is, this is going to knock you out of control too because I remember uh, one song that I always liked was that song called Tramp by Carla Thomas and Otis Redding. And uh, <laughs> I always loved to hear that song because Carla Thomas said, you, you are a tramp, Otis. Otis said, hey, so I, I, I'm still a lover. And this is the way a lot of females look at individuals. She said, you wear those big old broke iron shoes. You wear them overalls. And I, <clears throat> I've seen men just like that. But these men, they would have a pocket full of money, and they would have money in the bank, and they would have own land and stuff. But that's just the way that they, that they dress. And, uh, but Carla, but, uh, Carla Thomas called him, he's a tramp. <laughs> 
And uh, Otis said, hey, that's all right. I'm going to love her. And a lot of men think that just because they are, they can love real good or they good in the bed that that's all they need. <laughs> and a lot of times that get them through there. And uh, this is what uh, <laughs> uh, Carla was trying to get Otis to see that, hey, you need to get a haircut. You need to have you need to have a big bank roll in your hand. You probably haven't even got twenty five cents. And uh, Otis was telling her he got six cars, he got three Cadillacs, and this is where a lot of individuals do. They tell females that they got all of these things, and a lot of times these females they believe it. And I and I try, and when I counsel females, I say, first of all, you you can't believe what males say. <laughs> because they are trying to get to the zone. And they'll tell you anything to get to the zone. And a lot of females, they'll let them get to the zone before they even find out whether they're telling the truth or not. Say, for instance, if uh, I remember when I was out at the uh, school in Preston, and this friend of mine, uh, Mary, and she had fell in love with this one guy, and he was he wasn't from down there. He he was up. He said he was from up north, and 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 he was, and he had come down there to elope with her. And the principal, Professor Gerald, he had me watching her because we were pretty good friends, and she was always talking about she wanted to lead the south, she wanted to lead the country, and uh, she had said she had fell in love with this guy, and uh, she was she was getting ready to go. So they had everybody watching out for this guy. And uh, they had me sitting there blocking her way at the door while we was out for lunch on uh, recess. We was out for lunch hour. So I'm there, you know, I'm eating my uh, lunch and watching her at the same time and got the chair. And uh, other people around that corner, they watching and, and they watching for the guy to come. And he did come. Had a 58 Chevrolet, a Bel Air Chevrolet, green and white. I, I'll never forget it. And uh, so she was telling me, "Let me go, let me go, uh, Ray. Let me, let me, let me go." I, I, and uh, she kept telling, asking me to let her go because she wanted to meet this guy and she wanted to elope with him and everything. And she made some good points and uh, she had made me feel kind of sad for that. She could love somebody that much to want to run off with them like that, and and a lot of girls were like that. And I and I thought about it. and I said, well, hey, I say, what she got to lose? I say, yeah, we in this country out here. She like picking cotton and working in the field. And he and he and she said he was gonna take her up there. And he had a had a nice place for him to stay and had a car and everything and and uh. So I said, well, I'm going to turn my back. And uh, when I turn my back and straighten up my chair, then you 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 go for it. If you make it good, if somebody else catch you, then, you know. So I turned my back in a, for a second, and she took out running. Boy, she was running. And uh, the person that was at the other corner, the day, they missed her. And she, once she got about uh, 10 yards ahead, it was all over then. She run down there and jumped in the Chevrolet and and, uh, and took off and all you seen was dust. So I walked back in the auditorium and looked at the one and all I could see was the uh, dust. She had done made her escape and got away. And so they so the principal come and asked me, say what happened? What happened, uh, Ray? What happened? I say I was getting ready to get something out of my lunch bag and I took my eye off her for a minute and she and she took off. I, it wasn't nothing I could do. <laughs> so uh, they, it wasn't nothing they could do either because they couldn't catch him because he hit that. And then he, when he hit the black top, he started squealing his wheel. He was determined. So they, they left out. So it was a long time after that that I heard about what happened to her. And it was long after that that I got a chance to talk to her. And when I did, she told me that the car was not his. He had rented the car, and when they got to where they was going, he didn't have a house for them to stay in. He was staying in a room in a house with a lot of other people, and then 
he 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 had a job, but the job he had wasn't what he had told her that he had the job. Can you understand, neighbor, what, how that happened? I, and how many women have went through that? I, they they buy into what the man tells them, but they be they are, they are so uh, want to be in love, so and they want a man that they can love and and be with and. And, and be a good wife, and the mother, and, the, and he did give her some kids. She, she had about three or four before you could even say uh, uh, Batman and Robin. And so she said that it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't what she thought it was going to be. And if she had it to do over again, she wouldn't have did it that way. She would have, she would have waited. And this is what parents be trying to tell their kids that hey. Don't go out there and, and just grab any man that tell you these things. Watch him. If a man tell you that he's going to come over, pick you up for a dinner and a movie on Saturday, and uh, you say, okay, then don't get dressed. <laughs> Wait until he gets there and then get dressed. You can take your shower and everything, but don't get dressed and be sitting there waiting. Because if he's not there at 7 o'clock like he said, then there's something wrong. He lied. He wasn't there. And he might be a liar. When I counsel females in, uh, when, they, when it comes to a relationship, I tell them, look, do not buy into what the man says, the male says. Because they'll, they'll tell you anything. Like I say, they get to your zone. And, uh, and they begin to see that if a man doesn't do what he say he's going to do, then chances are he's not going to be a good mate for you. He's going to be lying to you a lot of time. And they found that out. And a lot of them have come back and told him, say, yeah, Mr. Ray, yeah, he ain't do nothing that he said he was going to do. I had to, I had to dump him, get rid of him. And this is what you got to do. Now, if you want a man... Don't try to choose that man about for what he has, if he got money, and if he got a car. So if he says he loves you, then y'all might be able to work together to get a car if you really love each other. And uh, and he and he seems like he loves you, and he's going to treat you right. And now, if, if, uh, if you find a man that says he's going to treat you like a good wife, and he's gonna make, and he's gonna be a good father to your children, and he seems like he is gonna be a hard worker. You don't know, listen to him, yeah, because you ain't gotta marry him right away. Just wait and see how he does. If he goes and get a job, and he says he loves you, and you see your way, maybe becoming friends with him, and then falling in love with him, then. This might be a good thing. And this happens a lot of people. They become friends, and this is what you got to do. I remember the, uh, the uh, people out there at the job, they used to say, uh, Mr. 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 Robert, how come you ain't got a wife? I said, well, it's, it's because I can't really find one that's willing to worship the ground I walk on. <laughs> so I mean, you ain't gonna never find nobody like that. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you it, they are out there. If they know that you're gonna love them and and uh, treat them neighborly and decent, yeah, they 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 don't have to actually worship the ground, but they can act like they do, and that's all. That's all you need. And it, it, and it's it's women out there like that. Uh, so this is what you got to realize. Now, there's four kinds of females that the men have to be aware of. You got your uh, siren, and these are the women that they destroy men. They'll marry their man, and they'll make him work two jobs. They'll make him uh, get himself in debt and overextend themselves, and, and then they'll hold back the sex when he don't do what they got to do. And, and, these, and, they, and they make these men so afraid of them that they just almost like little mice around these. And these women here, they kill a lot of men. They go through men, and these men have heart attacks and strokes and all of this stuff. And then you have your side, your uh, courtesan. These are individual females that like to be pretty. They want to be the most beautiful 
woman when they walk into the room. Yeah. And these women, for some reason or another, they use this makeup and they think the beauty is in the makeup. That's so they think. I was at when I was at the rooming house uh, where me and my best friend Mark was. It one of the females came in there, and she was a courtesan, and she stayed there for almost six months, and I never saw her take a shower, go to the bath, and she would be upstairs in the bedroom with. Her. With guys and stay with a guy out there, and I never seen the same. And that's where courtesans are. They don't they don't believe in taking shower and being clean and stuff. They just like their beauty. Let their beauty does it for them. And then you got your whore, and and they'll go with any any man. And some men end up marrying these women, and they get their heart broken. A lot of times they end up getting put in jail. Because they done beat up domestic violence, she out with some other guy, and uh, and these are ones that'll make a murder out. Of you. Any woman would make a murder out of you, out of a man, if they try to have a war of love and love with the woman. The woman will always be able to to win in the in the, in the uh, love war of love, because you can have a woman up in the house and she can go downstairs and make love to two or three men and come back upstairs and the man won't even know it. But if the man go out and, and, and make love to another woman, so does he get in the door. The woman can almost tell it. So this is the, 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 the love thing, people. And I remember the, the, uh, the song, Jack Wilson's song, I want a woman, a lover, and a friend. <laughs> I don't want a woman who's a saint. I don't want one with powder and paint. I want one who's not make believe, the one that don't mind giving, so that she can receive. Now, now that's not hard to do, is? It? <laughs> that's the way Jackie said. But Smokey Robinson, he he said his mama told him to shop around. You know, don't don't get caught up with the first one you run into, and that's what his his that's what he sung about. So these songs can tell you how to really be, be, uh, have a love affair. Now, that's all I got to share with you in this session, and I'm anxious to move on. Hello, neighbor. My name is Robert J. Ray. I'm a professional counseling therapist and trainer of trainers. I worked in a mental health prison for 11 years. I have fixed a lot of broken men and women in my 45 years as a counseling therapist. I was born in Maria, Mississippi and graduated from the famous T.J. Harris High School in 1963. T.J. Harris played Brinkley and Jim Hill in football and basketball every year before that stumbling block of integration dissembled the black race. I ran for mayor of Meridian in 2021. I ran for governor of Mississippi in 2019. I'm Robert J. Ray, the man with all of the answers, every Monday at 4 p.m. Watch me on webelieve.org.